Hi, everyone, and welcome to the service design track here at Lindholmen Software Development Day. Uh, I hope you've had a great day so far with a lot of interesting speeches. Uh, my name is Mille Gudstam. Uh, last year, I participated in uh, the Software Development Day as a speaker, uh, talking about Lean UX and how the process can help us to deliver better results to our end customers. Uh, I'm really honored to be back this year uh, as a moderator for the very same track. Uh, when I'm not moderating conferences, I am a UX designer and product manager at IQ here in Gothenburg. So naturally, this topic is very close to my heart. Uh, parallel to this track, we have the Emerging Technology track. This is a brand new track here at the Software Development Day. Uh, they are going to have a look into what's cooking in the industry, talking about our artificial intelligence and machine learning. So if you're interested, head over to virtual room number one. Otherwise, I would be more than happy to uh, keep you in this track. Uh, before we dive into today's speeches, just some general information. Uh, we have two speakers in this track today. They will talk for approximately 20 minutes uh, each. Uh, there will be a couple of minutes for questions in the end. Uh, so if you have any questions, please uh, send them in the chat and we will have a Q&A after um, the speeches. So as you all know, the theme here today is beyond 2033 and how our life will have changed by then. Here in the service design track, we focus on software as a driving force for innovation and change uh, in our products and services. In this track, we have gathered practitioners and scholars who are interested in understanding how companies uh, change their business, operations, architecture, and organization as part of the software-driven innovations. Uh, and more importantly, how will it be different 13 years from today? And as technology advances, higher demands are placed on human interactions with technology. Uh, the area of UX and service design is therefore under constant uh, development. Uh, it's our responsibility to ensure that people have the right con conditions to interact with these new products and services on the market. So as technology becomes more advanced, it is our job to make sure that it's simple enough for the end users. So as mentioned before, we have two really interesting um, speakers lined up for you here today. Uh, first up, we have Elena Galitsky. She is the founder and CPO at Butchu Design Studio. Uh, ever since shifting her career into digital design, she started out as an award-winning freelancer and has now evolved into a mastermind, uh, successfully managing a 40 people full cycle digital agency. Elena is here today to talk to us about how we can use UX to build strong brands. UX within digital products is an integral part of the overall customer experience nowadays and has a huge impact on the perception of your brand. So Elena will show us different ways of how we can build digital experiences that complement and strengthen your brand. So without further ado, uh, welcome up on the stage, Elena Galitsky. Hi. You hear Hi, me all right? Yes. Hello. Hi, everybody. Uh, I think the presentation is supposed to be on. Yeah. Okay, so I'm very happy to be here today and thank you for having me. Um, I wanted to talk about um, UX and uh, technology in the sense of how it builds uh, the brand and how it is a continuous part of the brand experience. Uh, and talking about the future, it feels that the bar uh, for the quality of experience with the technology associated with the brand uh, is getting higher. And as we see, it will uh, continue getting higher because the demand and the expectations of customers towards brands are uh, very uh, big. Okay, so why exactly I think I am uh, a 
the right person to talk about this uh, it's because for 10 years i've been working with customers globally uh, and those were companies or startups that were either starting to build a product associated with their service or uh re redoing it and trying to make it better and what i noticed is that in that effort to build a digital presence for a company or for a brand uh, quite often people get caught into thinking just about the function and thinking just about how it should work and what it should do the product and uh not paying probably enough attention uh, to how the product makes people feel and hence how the product presents uh, or represents the brand. So let's look into what uh, actually a brand is. So the perception of a brand in customer's mind is actually built out of all of the impression the customer has had with the brand. Those can be offline impressions, for example, if we're talking about some um, fashion retailer. You can go off, uh, to the offline store, but you also can have an online experience and it's also it also matters. So UX is kind of an integral part of customer experience and a big, and it's getting bigger, uh, internal part of uh, the brand itself, the perception of the brand. Of course, with the uh, COVID, we see that it's getting even more important because everything tends to happen online, uh, tends to happen distantly. So if we look into the future, let's see uh, what is upcoming. We can see that, for example, Facebook just released Horizon. Uh, people tend to go virtual and they feel comfort comfortable and confident developing new uh, identities in the virtual world there is a very interesting research re regarding generation a uh, alpha uh, people kids who were born in 2010 uh, they tend to um, see that uh, online uh, identities that they can have they can be different and they do, are not necessarily attached to their real identity. So they basically play roles online and they understand that it's kind of a game. Uh, Reface application, it's an application that allows you, uh, you to uh, put your face on some movie part or a, a music video, which also makes you virtual. So what we can uh, understand from all these uh, facts is that um, everything virtual kind of becomes real people uh, take it seriously and people expect every uh, virtual element be it a, an application a product a web experience uh, to be as real as it gets hence elaborating those experiences should be uh, an important part of developing of the brand uh... So the takeaways are the bar for the quality of the experience with the brand online is really high and it will get higher if we look at the future generations. We understand that image of a product is uh, inevitably built in uh, customers' minds, even though an application or technic uh, some technical experience is not a real person, there is still an image that people build behind it. Virtual becomes real and we expect everything digital to have a character and voice and be human. So basically what we need is to understand the customers and create a friend for them. Uh, I was, uh, I made a very interesting exercise and I asked uh, some of my friends and colleagues to do that. And it's when you uh, look at all of the uh, applications and products that you use uh, and put them on a scale. Uh, so on scale X, we see uh, like on the left, you see uh, if, you, if you don't enjoy using the product and towards the right is the degree of how you enjoy the product. And the vertical scale is uh, if I think that the product has a strong brand. So I really enjoy using Notion, Figma, Airbnb, TransferWise, and I see that those products, they have a voice, they show that they care, they are smart, they constantly change and improve, uh, and they feel good. 
and they are uh, bugless and I can trust them that they will not let me down. Looking, for example, at some products at the lower left uh, end of this scale, I know that I have to use those products because some of them are really monopolists, but I really don't enjoy, I don't see a brand voice behind them and I don't see um, that they are uh, good enough for me to trust them all the time. So basically we want to build a product that people will enjoy. We want to build a product that people uh, will uh, perceive as their friend. And who is a friend? A friend is somebody you trust, who will not let you down. Uh, somebody that you share uh, important values with. Somebody who is caring and nice to you. And in this lecture, I want to um, reduce like the amount of uh, possible like theoretical information that I could put into here and go straight to some practical advice. Uh, and if something uh, like if, if you want to dig deeper into this, I really expect you to ask questions after this, uh, because again, I skipped the theory, I just went straight to practical advice. So first, and I guess the most important part is so-called microcopy. So microcopy is a term that in design we use to uh, mark uh, the small texts in the interface uh, that label fields that give you hints and uh, label buttons and prompt you to do something. Uh, these texts are actually the backbone of the whole experience and of the quality of the UX, but also they are something that very strongly helps build the character behind uh, a product. So now let's look at some examples. First and foremost, of course, microcopy needs to be functional. By being functional, we mean that it is upfront, it is clear, it uses simple language so that everybody can understand it. It gives you just enough information to use the interface uh, without making mistakes. And at the same time, it makes sure that if you make a mistake, uh, it's like easily, uh, uh, e easily fixed. Um, another interesting example of using a microcopy is when you use it together with creating an actual character, an actual mascot. Uh, quite a few products do it and do it successfully. It's a very good way to put a real face uh, to the product and to create a person, person or a mascot behind it. So you can see that uh, the VPN application quite popular, which is called the bear, uh, uses the bear and the bear is kind of somebody who talks to the user through uh, the time when uh, the application is uh, being used. Uh, another example, which I very like uh, is Headspace application. It's an application for meditation and mindfulness. Uh, they don't, uh, explicitly create a character, but they uh, do this conversational like interface language that all the time it feels like you're having a dialogue with Headspace application and it feels really good, it makes you feel very confident. It is really caring because it explains you every step of the way. Uh, and in the end, the service that this uh, product develops, it's very good. So overall feeling is just amazing. Um, and this is an example, okay, here's the video. This is again an example of the uh, starting uh, using this application. Uh, you can see in the video if it will play, it should play now. So you can see how they uh, handle uh, every objection and every step uh, of uh, the user experience with this conversation like um, interface. Mm, and on the next slide, one second. I'm sorry, I think I'm having troubles with switching. Okay, here it is. 
another uh, important part of uh, using the microcopens using it right is when you ask for something. This is uh, particularly uh, particularly important for uh, the brand because quite often in applications and in products when you ask for something is asking about uh, notifications with which you can uh, drive the user back into using the app or the product. Uh, you're asking for um, allowing to send you emails or some news and so on. So you got to be nice when you're doing this, just as you would do if you were creating an online experience for a brand. Handling uh, unpleasant situations is one of the signature things about creating the brand experience uh, online because this is something this is this is a moment when you really need to be uh, caring and nice and understanding but quite often messages like uh, for example payment failures are quite harsh uh, dry and absolutely not nice for example a better example is what spotify does they don't blame the user for failing the payment. They think that something went wrong and they gently used to update the details. This is a nice way to do that. And finally, uh, one thing that deserves special attention is the uh, where 80% of your brand strength are hitting is the support. Uh, support is a special situation when a user has a problem and sometimes the degree of the problem is really high uh, and sometimes it's about losing the data or losing money or uh, doing something wrong for really failing and this is when people need fast reaction uh, and again showing that you care showing that you want to help uh, the quite often some of uh, products um, create a support system in a way so that people don't call too often and don't create a big uh, load of calls for the support team. But at the same time, it is really awful when you have a problem and you really cannot get to a person to talk to who will help. So Medium here is uh, one of the very good examples of how support is built in the product. So it shows, uh, it shows all the important topics that might help but in the end of this not too long list, you can obviously see that you can contact somebody and somebody will answer you shortly. Uh, and finally, um, the most important part of this whole speech is that nowadays brands uh, are not just about functionality. They represent certain values, they represent certain uh, approach and it's very important to show that uh, you care about sustainability, you care about uh, like if, if you are involved in this, you're eco-friendly. It is important to show that uh, you are smart and you use uh, technology to make people's life easier. I was trying to find good examples and probably like the one I found was, uh, sorry, uh, was uh, TransferWise, just as an example. They do the job for me. They hide, cancel transactions so that they don't overload me with unnecessary information. This is a nice example of being smart, being uh, caring, and uh, helping people to manage with uh, the task. If we look into the future and see, again, I'm talking about Generation Alpha, we can see that they are very confident using smart speakers. They are used to using chatbots, which again shows that uh, virtual, if I may say, robot uh, entities can be perceived as something real. And we need to work to make them uh, more real, to make them feel real. And on this matter, I really suggest uh, using uh, conversation like mm, one second uh, conversation like interfaces. Like for example, here you can see uh, Eda application, which is uh, an app that helps you assess your symptoms and 
uh, gives you suggestions about the problem that you might have with your health. And this is not really a chatbot, so there is no uh, NLP behind it. It's just a conversation like uh, interface for basically submitting a form. Works really nice. And the final, um, the final advice here is using uh, voice interfaces. Uh, probably many of you know Jira, and imagine how easy it would be uh, not to find a ticket in the pile of other tickets, but just to command a voice interface, hey, find this ticket and mark it done. Uh, just an example, imagine how much time that could uh, save. Basically, using voice interfaces, using chatbot interfaces is something that uh, can uh, enhance the uh, overall feel. And once again, returning back to microcopy, the language that you use, the values that uh, you show, uh, being interesting in the words that you choose, being witty, putting a joke here and there, is something that makes the overall feel of uh, the interface and the experience better and shows your brand as a personality and not just as a uh, robot that does the function. So I guess that's it and I'm ready for questions, if any. Thank you, Elena. Uh, a really interesting topic in today's competitive uh, market. Uh, you mentioned a little bit about the future, but I'm thinking considering today's theme, what do you believe would be mm -hmm. the biggest difference in the future in how both how we build strong brands, but also how we perceive them as users? Uh, well, I'm a strong believer that the demand for brands is uh, for them to be more mindful and for them to be more uh, sustainable. So they need to pursue the values that uh, all the humanity right now needs to pay attention to, being eco-friendly, uh, considering the consequences of what the product does. This is about collecting data. This is about uh, being uh, upfront with everything that the product does, payments, data collection, uh, offline uh, experience, and so on. So I think this demand is getting higher. And also, I think that in the end, uh, it will be more or less robots with personalities uh, presenting brands and uh, doing the online things that we do. And I'm thinking we have a lot of tech people, like big tech firms in the in the audience. What would be your number one advice for them to strengthen their brands? Well, number one advice would be to review the um, the copy, as I said in the uh, in the presentation, because it's really important. The voice that you use when you're talking to uh, your customers online, uh, it, it it should be humane and it should really reflect the values and the voice and the character. Because it can be witty, it can be meticulous, can be there, there are very many uh, nuances in this, and it really improves. And Thanks. from my experience, when tech people, yeah, so, sorry, from my experience, when tech people create uh, experiences without much uh, of involvement from creatives people, uh, sometimes uh, you end up with uh, uh, experiences that are not very clear. You, you, you don't always know what to do with the product. Very good advice. Thank you so much, Elena. Thank you. So next up on stage, we have uh, Tobias Fungren. He is the CEO at Freelway. Uh, he works with innovation development of sustainable mobility solutions for both goods and transportation of people. Uh, he has a background as a research scientist in the pharma industry, and his latest project involves sustainable home deliveries of groceries, pharmaceuticals, and parcels to both elderly and people in risk groups. Tobias is here to talk about mobility beyond 2030. The rapid transition to increased uh, e-commerce continues, and in 2033, he believes that the majority of purchases will be made via e-commerce. 
The demands from society are increasing on companies and the public sector to implement sustainable solutions. Digital solutions and system-wide between companies and services become important tools for the transition and require new working business models for cooperating players. So welcome up on stage, Tobias Fungren. <laughs> 